Good afternoon. And when Gail said that it was um, that was, she was so pleased that we could make it this afternoon, I'm so pleased to be able to talk to all of you this afternoon. So I'm delighted to be here to uh, have the opportunity to talk to you about my country, but especially to talk about the friendship we have between the United States and Colombia. I think that is the first message which is fundamental. Colombia and the United States have been friends for many, many years. You were the first country to recognize the independence of Colombia uh, back in the, the 1800s. So our history goes back, way back. And then when uh, I think men talk more about the relationship, they say that we fought with you in Korea for democracy. I like to talk about the fact that when there was the Alliance for Progress, we were the first country to receive a group of 40 Peace Corps who went down to Colombia. So when I came here two and a half years ago and knew I had such a difficult job to try and tell you about my wonderful country that has been going through difficulties but is definitely working ahead in a very positive way thanks to that cooperation that we have going, somebody said to me, you need more ambassadors. And I said, that's right. So the other Colombians that live here are my ambassadors, but I also wanted, and I met with the Peace Corps, because there's nothing more wonderful than as a child to have the opportunity to go to another country and get to know it. And I can't think of people who know my country better and love it more than these people who had been in the Peace Corps for the last 40 years ago and less. They came to my embassy. Our national anthem is more difficult than yours, if you can believe that. <laughs> There's a wider span and very difficult to reach. And so they walked in. They remembered it. The words of my national anthem, you never see them written anywhere else. They only exist for that national anthem. And they knew them all. And I said, this is an incredible group. I said, have you been back to Colombia? And they said, no. And I said, why? Because of insecurity. So I want to tell you the story that I told them. And so I said, would you go back if I go back with you? And they said, yes. So a year and, a, and, 20, a year and four months later, we organized a trip. 190 ex-Peace Corps came with me oh. to Colombia. And we went to Cartagena. And these are 60s. So for those, all of you are much younger. But for the 60s, this was sort of like a love fest of hippies. It was wonderful. <laughs> we were all delighted to be together. They were all delighted to be back in Colombia. And it was very moving because many of them decided to go back and visit the towns where they had been. And they found that that little girl that they taught the nursery rhyme to was a grandmother and still knew the nursery <laughs> rhyme. Or that the bedroom where they'd been had been kept the same. Or that the, the town decided to have a luncheon in the plaza for them because they were so excited to have John or Bill or Paul back again. So I love to talk about this story because, and in fact, I'm leaving right now to go down to Miami to talk to another Peace Corps group because the Peace Corps left Colombia for security reasons and we want them to be back and we now have a letter from my president and uh, I'm there to ask them to help me to make sure that we get the Peace Corps back in Colombia. Uh, they're the best spokesmen, and so I'm going to talk to my other ambassadors about Colombia. And why do I say that Colombia has changed so much? And it has to do with something we've done together. Colombia, uh, as many as you now we're seeing in Mexico, had to fight the drug problem because that creates not only a health problem as it does here, and that's why we need to fight demand because it has to do with supply. And my country, unfortunately, then became the supplier. So we created a problem in both countries. But we both have responsibilities, and we all both need to, to deal with it. And we found, as in Mexico then in the 80s, that the drug traffickers became very strong and very violent. So the country needed to take a stand. And that's what we're seeing right now in Mexico. Mexico is a strong country. It's going to survive, but it's going through a difficult moment of facing up to these drug traffickers. And what we need to do is to support them. What we need to do is to make sure that Mexico is able to maintain itself firm in the eyes of these kind of violence that comes with these drug traffickers. And that's what you helped us to do. Beginning in the 90s, the US and Colombia uh, work together, President Clinton put together something called Plan Colombia, so that we could work on this issue together. And it had all the elements, because 
you need to have security in order to have economic development and to have social development. And it can be either a vicious or a virtuous cycle. If you have, as we had had in the previous decade, a growing uh, problem of drugs, which is always associated with violence and corruption, then your economy goes down and your social indicators get worse. If, as has happened after Plan Colombia, we have been able to retake our country. And I love to tell one story because it's, it's very difficult to understand the kind of threat that this, that, that the, uh, this situation uh, creates. We were at a point where it was very difficult to travel around Colombia because the illegal groups had become so rich that they had taken over parts of Colombia. So we're talking about 202. And the first thing President Uribe did when he came in 202, he said, we're all going to retake our country. So I'm going to make sure that all our main roads are safe. And he made sure, and at Christmas time, of the 40 million Colombians, 20 million got in the cars, and we went from one part of the country to another. And if people felt safer, they went in caravans. If they wanted to, they could go on their own. And all of a sudden, we were able to retake our country. And we have been working with you for the last five years. Now, Colombia has decreased its violence by half, and all our main cities are safer than most Latin American cities, than some American cities. And that's why when my daughter said, can I go down with 12 of my friends? I said, of course you can. And they're gonna be in Bogota, and they're gonna be in Cartagena, and they are going to be perfectly safe. And so I want to extend also an invitation to all of you. Colombia now is at a different level. And as a result, our economy is growing. Colombians are investing, but so are foreigners, so are you. Our foreign direct investment in the last four or five years has been of more than six billion. And as an economist said to me, there's nothing more uh, scary or it's nothing more uh, that, that doesn't like to take chances than foreign money because they have a choice where they want to put it. And if they decide to put it in your country, it's because you, they think that your country is a good choice because they've had a lot of other choices. And so Colombia is now moving ahead. And it is creating jobs which become fundamental to be able to, to make sure that my country be, it continues to be stable, continues to be strong, that we continue to fight the drug issues together, that we continue to make sure that there's greater peace. That's why the free trade agreement that we're talking about is very important because as part of what you did to help us 15 years ago was you allowed us to send our products free here in the U.S. so that we would create jobs. And we created about 600,000 jobs uh, to be able to sell flowers here and bananas and apparel, etc. But when we created those jobs there, we created jobs here because for every uh, job in the flower business, the one, what, each job of somebody who cuts the flowers or grows the flowers, you create two jobs here because you go into the retail and into the distribution. So uh, let's look at another sector, apparel. We are very good and we have very good craftsmanship. Colombia is getting to be known also for uh, its, its style and for the fashion. And so we buy cotton from your mills and we work and embroider there. We make a lot of women's uh, underwear, mm -hmm. the fancy, elegant, lingerie. pretty. Lingerie. lingerie, that's right. Um, and so it becomes, it works together for both of us. And what we're trying to do with the Free Trade Agreement is to make sure that we keep these jobs and that we create new investment. There's nothing better for investment than trust. And two countries that have worked together have a lot of trust. So we're talking about great potential, a country that now offers the physical security, the legal security, the education to work together. And this trade agreement opens up also uh, for agriculture. And in this case, we're totally complementary because the agriculture in my country, since we're right on the equator, is tropical. And your agriculture, because you're further north, is temperate. So we already buy wheat and corn and soy from you. And we sell you the bananas and pineapples and tropical fruit and herbs, etc. So what this free trade agreement does is build on, a, on existing exchanges, makes it stronger, and helps both of our countries create jobs. 
because we're all aware of the factory that closes, but we're not aware of all the jobs that are created. And economists tell us, and it's difficult because what we do have is the, the, the view of that factory that did close, is that the U.S. economy has been growing in the last two years thanks to trade, to all your selling abroad. And for us, this is also important, and that's why that's one of my toughest jobs. I spend a lot of time up in Congress. In fact, last year I had 830 meetings up in Congress. So when Gail says that I do not spend my time drinking tea, believe me that unless I have a lot of tea with congressmen, there's not much time for me to drink tea with anybody else. So I think I'm going to stop here because I would like to have much more of an exchange. But I wanted to let you know that Colombia is a country that is going ahead. It's thanks to you. We've had a wonderful relationship. It is the most biodiverse country because we're right on that cornerstone. We have an ocean on the Pacific and on the Atlantic. We have mountains, so we have snow-covered mountains, but we also have jungle and we also have desert. So we have the greatest number. We have more birds than Canada, Mexico, and the United States put together. We have the greatest number of frogs and amphibians in the world. And I can... Uh, <laughs> And for those of you who don't like that, we also have the greatest variety of flowers. <laughs> so you can choose fauna or you can choose flora. And we have great creativity. Uh, you may know Botero, who was a well-known sculptor, and for the youngsters, Shakira and Juanes uh, uh, are all <laughs> Colombians. And we're all very, very proud. So I want to talk further on is more about our culture, and that's just what I say. We need to keep on working together to fight drugs together because that's an issue which is regional. The U.S., Mexico, Central America, Colombia, we all have to fight together. But what we really want to do is talk more about education, exchange, all those wonderful things that we have in common that we can share. And you're most definitely invited to go to Colombia, and it's very safe to do so. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity.